everyone, welcome to Rhyme and Storytime. This week was celebrated in National Indigenous Peoples Day. We want to acknowledge that we live in Treaty 1 territory at the crossroads of the Anishinaabe, Métis, Cree, Dakota, and OG Cree nations. And on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. National Indigenous Peoples Day is June 21st and it celebrates the heritage and outstanding accomplishments of the Inuit, Métis and First Nations people of Canada. There are many ways to celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day. Here are some examples. Make a bannock with your family. Learning about the history of the people whose land you live on. Learning about the traditions of the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I found a book written by a local author whose homeland is the northern interior of British Columbia. His name is Brett David Hewson. Let's read The Sockeye Mother and learn about the Gitsan people of Northwest British Columbia and the Sockeye Salmon. The Sockeye Mother by Brett David Hewson. Small fry. There's a strong undertow today. The turbulent waters caress the backs of the little semelparous life forms emerging from their gravel nests. A small, free swimming fry bears witness to the currents of spring after spending weeks developing and using up its nutritious yolk sac. It's one of few remaining fry leaving its long winter's home to seek out nursing waters. This is the time of the Black Bear's Walking Moon, which is early spring to the Gitsan people of the Pacific Northwest interior. Changes in the air as the days grow longer. Renewal is a life force that guides the world around the Little Fry's waterways. All flora begin to stir, preparing to bud and bring green to the landscape. Stores of food for the people along River of Mists are running low, but preparations for the new seasons of fishing and gathering have begun. New snow, which the Gitsang call Delugwa, falls to take away the old snow. Sockeye are one of many species of salmon that call sand home. Although all species are valued, the Gitsan prefer the flavor and number of sockeye that return to their spawning grounds every year. The cultures along sand, otherwise known as the Skeena River, flourish and shape their existence around the life cycle of this keystone species. Little does this small sockeye fry know that its life cycle not only nourishes the people and other beings along the watersheds, it is the whole reason the forests and landscapes exist. Time to grow. After a couple of years of schooling in the deeper parts of the nursing lake, this sockeye has become a smolt. Its little silvery body begins taking the shape of its blue-backed future self. The smolt is outgrowing the lake. This signals the spring salmon's returning moon, so the little sockeye begins its treacherous journey down the Skeena. As the spring salmon's return, the sockeye smolts depart to relieve their urge for saliferous waters. April carries summer innuendos as warm winds flow through nearly blooming flowers. The scent of pine and cedar wafts across moist, pillowy moss. The nets and rods of the Gitsan people scour sand in hopes of taking part in the return of Ya, the spring salmon. Ceremony is held and feasts occur to welcome the runs of salmon who come to replenish the land. It's not only a time to give thanks, but also a time to send prayer that the salmon will always return, that they will provide nourishment for all who are living within its realm. The young sockeye has so far avoided predators, escaping the hungry hands of the otter and dodging the unnaturally changing landscape denuded by the clear cutting of man. The smolt and her school have made their journey to the Pacific and north to the ocean waters well, they will continue to feed and grow. A replenishing death. For two years, the sockeye mother has been feeding in the ocean waters while avoiding sharks and killer whales. Through instinct, smell, 
and much that is still not understood, the Sockeye Mother swims against the powerful currents of Zan to return to the exact place in the rivers where she was spawned. It's now the grizzly bear's moon. August is the time when all the Gitzan people and grizzly bears pluck hundreds of thousands of sockeye from Zam. Many predators, such as the grizzly, discard most of the carcass. They carry their catch sometimes hundreds of meters into the forest, only to eat the eggs and fatty bellies. The decaying bodies of the salmon leave nitrogen that nourishes the soil. Battered and beaten by the journey, the sockeye mother is literally decaying due to constant hard work and lack of food. She finds a male partner who has dug a nest to her liking. She lays her eggs. She can now die a replenishing death. The dying salmon bodies become fertilizer for all the flora that shape the great lands. Without the sockeye mother, the Gitsan, as they are, would simply not exist. The sockeye salmon is more than just a source of food for the Gitsan people. Over its life cycle, it nourishes the land and forests where the Gitsan people live. Remember to check out all of our other stories and songs on our website. This Sunday is Father's Day, so we have a special story that you can watch. Happy Father's Day! Let's make a turtle craft. Materials, green paint, green and blue construction paper, googly eyes, glue, a potato masher, scissors. Take a potato masher, dip it into green paint and put it onto blue construction paper. Cut out a head, four legs, and a tail out of green construction paper. Glue your turtle parts onto your blue construction paper and glue googly eyes onto the head. The turtle is a First Nation symbol that is associated with the earth. Did you know that Turtle Island is another name for North America? The name comes from various indigenous oral histories that tell stories of a turtle that holds the world on its back. For some indigenous peoples, the turtle is considered an icon for life. We got the craft idea from HappyToddlerPlayTime.com. Now you have three cute turtles swimming in water. Go to our website for more craft videos. We have a Bannock recipe that you can go to our website to get and make as a family. Bannock is a type of fry bread and is made by the First Nations and Métis people. Bannock is usually made over the fire and eaten with butter or jam. Rhymer's story time is over for today. Happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Join me next week when we celebrate Canada Day. Thanks for watching. Bye.